Well, I hate to admit we're starting to make a career out of this one little radio here. Okay, let's review what we've done so far. Back last year, probably August or September, I put in all the new yellow film caps you see, uh, including the electrolytics and all the smaller value uh, yellow capacitors. Um, for whatever reason, the electrolytics drifted. They have been replaced again here about two or three days ago. And at that time, I went through and replaced every one of these old carbon comp resistors with a, a new equivalent, except for this little guy down. Let me find him. This, this one right here. He's a yellow, black, brown. I think it was 100 meg or something like that. 100K. Whatever it was, he was right within tolerance. Hadn't drifted a whole lot, so I left him alone. Okay, we got everything in the way it was. Tested the tubes. They'd been tested by a competent service repairman. He pretty much told me I'm crazy for bringing them to him. There's nothing wrong with them, so <laughs> I cut my losses and take the advice and come back home. You'll have that. Anyway, all of our tubes are okay. Now that we've got power to the set, we run a full power test at 117 volts. We know that we got power to it. Our audio amplifier works. We had good continuity when we tested it. Uh, it ohmed out good. And uh, we have controllable volume through the volume control, so we know everything's good over in here. The problem is we have no reception now. We have intermittent crackling, uh, intermittent squalling. Uh, you'll be tuning through the tuning capacitor. It'll start squalling. You can tune through it. It makes no va no different where you're at on the dial from 55 to 100 and, or fi from 55 to 1710. It makes no difference where you're at. It'll crackle all the way through the dial, or it will do nothing all the way through the dial, or it'll bust into noise halfway through the dial <laughs> at random spots. Basically, what this radio did in part two after I recapped it. Um, it's back to doing it again. So it makes me wonder in the part one where I actually dim bulb tested this radio if it had this problem before and the bad electrolytics which was in a tube right here where these are at. There was a two section 4040 microfarad uh, tube electrolytic capacitor where these two are at. If that being bad, the loud hum that those would produce when they go bad was actually my, uh, masking silver mica disease in these IF cans, um, which talking with uh, several people here on uh, YouTube that, that know what they're doing um, have restored before and know exactly what the symptoms of uh, silver mica disease is, are saying, in fact, you know, I might have to take these cans apart on the top side, clean them up, and then to trial and error. Um, put a fixed capacitor in there so you know what it is is what it'll be. Um, anyway, let's look at some values over here and see what we got. Okay, on one of our IF cans, one of these capacitors tests in at 22 ohms. The opposite side is 22 ohms. On our second IF can, directly off the 12BA6, one of our capacitors is a 13 ohm, the other one's an 18 ohm. So, let's set the camera down and do some testing and see if, in fact, if we're anywhere close to any of these. And if we're not, well, we know we have a problem and it's been confirmed two different ways. One, that the values aren't right, and two, that we have excessive noise coming out of this beast that's not supposed to be there. So. Um, we'll set the camera down for a minute and do some checking. I'll write down my values and we'll be right back. Well, preliminary investigations have shown and I do believe we have found a failure here. In the IF can right here, which is labeled L4, which would be this little jobby right here, that's supposed to have a 13 and an 18 uh, microfarad capacitor in there. Well, the 13's reading 12.6 and the 18's reading 15. 
Over here on the other side, we have a 22 and a 22. One of the 22s is reading 16.3. The other 22 is reading 16.5. So, if these jobbies are 20%, 17.6 is tolerance. These two are out of tolerance right here. These two are still within, but they're very close to being out within decimal points. <laughs> so, I think what we're seeing here is failure in this IF can right here. And I'm going to have to pull it, pull the cap off the top, and take a look. So, let's flip it over and see what we got. Holy cow, this is a nightmare. That was a pain to get them off. Where they had them crimped in the bottom here and here. Then you had to pull this keeper that I thought just allowed the tube shield, the uh, shield to pop off. This was actually the keeper that went through the chassis here and here to secure the whole can in. Ugh. Alright, guys, give me some guidance. Where do I go from here? very delicate wire we're dealing with here and I sure as hell don't want to louse this up. Ask for some help. Any comments will be uh, well welcomed. been gathering some information on this uh, Sylvania 542 radio chassis and uh, come down off of a good high of a day yesterday you know it's 60 degrees outside a little breezy but for Ohio standards I'll take it a beautiful day yesterday so you know had a good day I thought well I'll go down and try to tackle these IF cans last night and uh, the first part of the video I made I was getting kind of tired and I probably explained a few things that uh, weren't correct or don't make no sense so I need to go back over that today and uh, correct my wrongs um, on my drawing here last evening my schematic I was telling you that uh, these readings I was taking were in microfarads well folks it's hard to convert microfarads uh, resistance to microfarads let's put it that way um, what I meant to say is these marks that were on my schematic was uh, the resistance of the ohms uh, what these cans should be and uh, my uh, findings are underneath of there and uh, the findings are a little bit closer um, than what I actually thought because they're again between the the writer's schematic back here and Sam's photo fact we found yet another discrepancy in our drawings um, the riders show these ohming out at 22 and 22 and 13 and 18. Sam shows that they ohm out at 15 and 15 and 12.2 and 14.2. Well, that's a lot closer to what I got. 14.2 I got 15. 12.2 I got 12.6 and both of the 15 ohms, one was 16.3, one was 16.5. That's that's a lot closer than what we had. So be aware of this kind of stuff. There's a lot of discrepancies out there. I cannot believe how many differences I have run into uh, with just three different sets of schematics for this radio. So, just a little heads up I thought I'd pass along. Now, in my gathering and grasping of information for this radio set, I've been in contact with a fellow over in Pennsylvania who on YouTube goes by the handle of AM Station Engineer. And, uh, Tim, he's a very knowledgeable guy. He's given me a lot of guidance via email. Um, things to look out for and we have been discussing at length these uh, IF transformers and the silver, silver mica disease that they develop over the years as the uh, capacitors, these sheets down on the bottom break down and um, it's not like a pretty lengthy process I hope I don't mess anything up trying to do this but he gave me a link 
to a fella on YouTube who goes by the handle Retro Chad. And uh, what he had was a 66 Hammerlin HQ-180A that he repaired several IF Transformers on it. And, uh, boy, I give my hats off to him. He, he's a hell of a repairman. He, he dove right in there and got her done. So, the first thing we need to do, according to his video, is unmount these two IF Transformers. And I want to make this very clear right now. Make a diagram and take pictures. Because uh, this particular radio, I'll show you a picture I took at the bottom of it, is not too daunting. We don't have too many wires to take off of this one. Whereas you see on this set, we've only got one, two, three, four, five tabs. There's a, a wire to two wires on each tab and a capacitor and a resistor here and there. That won't be so bad. The other one's a little bit more cumbersome. It's buried underneath the clock plug and the power cord and a couple other things, but there again, one, two, three, and four. And I think this fourth terminal back here, I don't believe anything's connected to it. I'm going to have to look a little thorough. I hope not, because if that's the case, that one should be a pretty easy thing to pull out of there. But make sure you take plenty of pictures, which I got good pictures. I need to draw myself a diagram which I uh, went online to Nostalgia Air and copied off some pictures of my IF transformers that I can draw arrows off of and label all my wires and capacitors and resistors. And uh, here's a blow up of what the Riders Nostalgia Air provides you for the uh, resistance of the coils in those IF cans. Like I said, 22, 22, 13, and 18. Whereas, um, whereas the SAMS is completely different. 15, 15, 12.2, 14.2, so keep an eye open for that. But anyway, back to these transformers. We gotta unsolder our connections on the base, pull them out careful, very, very careful, because I know the camera will never make it out. There's very fine leads that come up and go to these coils all along this outside edge. And they come in right down here at the bottom off of these pins. You gotta be very, very careful. So we'll unmount them. Um, he suggests after he did his to put, once you got them unmounted, put the sleeves back over them to protect them. And I've got to go get them to hold them really, really soft. You know, you want to clamp them solid, but you don't want to smash them because it's plastic. It's old. It's brittle. It'll break. Um, put your cam back over that. Clamp them in your vice grips. And we have to drill out. Again, this camera won't show it. Uh, I concluded some pictures, but there's a rivet right there. We have to drill that rivet out in both of these IF cans and pull those mica sheets out of there. Uh, once that's done, he suggests trimming back the leads that come over the sheets, just a little bit to keep them from interfering with anything else, and putting just a dab of super glue on these fine little leads right here to keep them from coming loose from the plastic. Uh, uh, then when you're done, to check your continuity between your pins and your coils, make sure you haven't bumped nothing loose or jostled anything loose, and then check your continuity between the can and the pins, make sure you have no continuity there because you don't want that. Um, the next step is basically to reinstall them on the chassis, put the cans back on, mount them back down, and then to use a 100 picofarad capacitor in both of these for the AMI IF stages. Um, if you have FM, he suggests to use 22 picofarad, but we want to look for some 100s to to get this done. So, let's put the camera down and get the business.